At first glance, it might just look like a massive construction site, bulldozers, cranes, and endless concrete. But what you're actually looking at is China building its first major canal in over 1,000 years. And not just anywhere, but through some of the most rugged terrain in southern China. You've probably seen how fast China builds bridges that stretch across entire valleys and railways that cut straight through mountains. But this time, they're doing something different. This is the Pinglu Canal, one of China's most ambitious infrastructure projects in recent history. It stretches 134.2 kilometers, just over 83 miles, starting from the Shijin Reservoir in Hengzhou and ending at the Qinjiang River, which flows into the Beibu Gulf. That final connection is what makes the canal so important. It turns landlocked areas deep inside Guangxi into potential export hubs. China has a long history of building artificial canals. The most famous, the Grand Canal, is over 1,700 kilometers long and helped power the country's economy for centuries. It allowed grain to flow from the fertile south to the political capitals in the north and played a key role in unifying the country's transport system during the Sui and Tang dynasties. But after that golden age of waterway construction, China shifted focus toward roads, railways, and air travel, especially in the 20th century. Water transport took a back seat. For over 1,000 years, no new major man-made canal was built. So why revive the idea now? Because China's economic map has changed. While the East Coast remains a manufacturing powerhouse, central and western provinces like Chongqing, Guizhou, and Sichuan are growing fast. But they are far from the sea. Getting goods from there to ports like Shanghai or Shenzhen takes time and money. A canal offers a more efficient alternative. It's cheaper than rail, uses less energy than trucks, and can move massive amounts of cargo. The Pinglu Canal isn't just about reviving old traditions, it's solving a very modern problem. Just like the Grand Canal once reshaped ancient China's internal economy, this one is being built to connect a new part of the country to the global market. This project isn't just about pouring concrete, it's about logistics, strategy, economics, and yes, politics. On paper, digging a 134-kilometer canal through mountains and hills sounds like overkill, especially in a country that already has some of the world's busiest highways and most advanced high-speed rail. But this isn't about flashy construction. It's about fixing a real logistics bottleneck. Much of southwestern China, places like Guizhou, Yunnan, and Sichuan, is packed with industries. Factories, coal mines, steel plants, cement producers. But they all share one problem. They're landlocked. Getting goods to the east coast can mean a journey of over 1,000 kilometers. It's slow, expensive, and depends heavily on overworked rail lines and highways. The Pinglu Canal changes that. It gives these inland provinces a direct water route to the sea via the Beibu Gulf in southern Guangxi, a huge win for businesses shipping bulk cargo. And it's not just a logistical fix. The canal plays a key role in China's new international land-sea trade corridor, a strategy linking railways, highways, and now canals, especially in underdeveloped western regions. The goal, direct access to Southeast Asia and global markets. Shipping by water uses about one-fifth the fuel per ton of cargo compared to road transport. That means fewer emissions, less fuel burned, and a more sustainable supply chain, critical for a country trying to clean up its logistics sector. And there's the issue of redundancy. Most of China's exports travel through a handful of coastal ports. If they face disruptions due to weather, congestion, or geopolitics, inland alternatives like Pinglu give the country more control over its own trade routes. Construction officially began in August 2023 with a total budget of around $10 billion. Completion is expected by 2026. 
once operational, it will allow ships to move between inland factories and international ports without using a single highway or railway. The canal is designed to handle vessels up to 5,000 tons, typically used for bulk goods, and carry over 95 million tons of cargo annually, double what the Panama Canal moved in its early years. To put that in perspective, that's the weight of 950,000 fully loaded freight train cars. Unlike rivers, which are at the mercy of natural flow and flooding, this canal is engineered from scratch, planned, controlled, and built for efficiency. But building it is no small job. The Pinglu Canal cuts through mountains, hills, rivers, and villages, rerouting roads, relocating residents, and reshaping the landscape. One of the biggest challenges is elevation. That's why the project includes three large ship locks. The biggest, Tiandang Lock, will be the largest water-saving ship lock ever built, designed to move large vessels up and down steep height changes while recycling water and minimizing loss. This is essential in a region that experiences seasonal droughts. In total, the route includes over 90 bridges and 40-plus kilometers of excavated terrain. In some areas, they're removing up to 13 million cubic meters of earth, enough to fill 5,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. And it's built to modern standards, reinforced embankments, automated water systems, and smart logistics integration. Thousands of workers and machines operate around the clock. The result? A canal that functions more like a highway than a traditional waterway. Fast, efficient, and reliable. But how does it compare globally? Unlike the Panama and Suez canals, which connect oceans, the Pingalu Canal connects inland rivers to a gulf. It's not competing with those canals. Its focus is domestic efficiency, not international shipping. Still, it's just as strategic for China as Suez is for Egypt, or Panama for the US. So how will it change things? By cutting transport distances up to 560 kilometers, the canal could save a full day of shipping time for inland provinces. Cities like Liuzhou and Nanning could become regional trade hubs, with new industrial parks, logistics centers, and export zones already being planned. Ports like Qinzhou, Fangchenggang, and Beihai are expanding, turning from second-tier ports into vital national trade points. This gives China more control over its internal logistics and more flexibility when global supply chains are stressed. There's also diplomatic value. The Pinglu Canal strengthens trade ties with Vietnam, Thailand, and Malaysia creating a southern trade route that bypasses more sensitive areas like the South China Sea or near Taiwan. In short, this is infrastructure as leverage, but no project of this scale is without trade-offs. Thousands of residents have been relocated, sometimes entire villages cleared. Compensation has been offered, but some, especially the elderly, feel the loss is about more than money. It's about identity and belonging. Environmentally, the canal slices through wetlands, farmlands, and forests. This threatens biodiversity, water supplies, and more. Engineers are responding with ecological corridors, real-time monitoring systems, water-saving locks, silt traps, and drainage basins. But these require long-term oversight. Water supply is another issue. The canal draws from the Sijian Reservoir, which could strain agriculture and drinking water in dry seasons, despite planned mitigation. And while shipping is cleaner than trucking, increased ship traffic brings more emissions, noise, and pollution risk, especially in formerly rural areas. So the big question, will it work? By 2026, the Pinglu Canal could revolutionize logistics, for southern and western China. It may carry millions of tons of goods each year and help create new economic zones. But risks remain. Underutilization, high maintenance costs, climate impact, and long-term environmental challenges. Still, the ambition is undeniable. China is building a high-tech inland canal system 
at record speed to unlock trade, lower costs, and gain strategic autonomy. It might not be famous like the Suez or Panama, but for China it could be even more important.